Oh, glory, 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 glory. I think today there is something wrong. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come at your throne. I give you glory and I give you honor. As I stand at this moment, I rebuke every plan of darkness. I rebuke every evil attack. I take possession of this place in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that every evil spirit which has no place on this platform should be rebuked and send it on fire in Jesus' mighty name. Father, take control of this place. Father, rebuke every spirit who doesn't confess the name of the Lord. I send fire to the devil. I send fire to the camp of the darkness. I send fire to the kingdom of darkness. In the name of Jesus, let your power be on this place. Let everything who doesn't confess the name of God should cease on this place. And let your Holy Spirit be in control. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Glory be to God. Apology once again. When the devil is at work, you can never sit down and look at it just like that. We have to stand on prayer. So, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let us continue. I said I will not fear. I will preach the word of God. Without fear. Without favor. Without looking into your eyes. I will preach it. Because we need. You know this time we are. God put us back into our houses. So that we can start things new. We can do what God wants us to do. When we come out again, the churches we're going to be starting, they shall be built in the good doctrine. And the people will start preaching the word of God. They will preach the word of God without fear, without favor, and with conviction that God has called me to do this work of God. No compromising the word of God. Don't look for the word of God to preach that these, these words, if I preach, a lot of people will run away from the church. It's better for you to remain with two people in the church, three people in the church, but you're preaching the word of God to let the children of God, when the times come, they should find themselves with God in heaven. And not you having a lot of people in the church and all of them at the end find themselves to hell. Because you are compromising the word of God. Because you haven't built the wall around that church. What you are doing is just playing around with the lives of the children of God. Instead of you reproofing them, rebuking them, and also exhort them, and also correct them. Because that's the work God gave you. Standing behind the pulpit is not something you're supposed to be playing around with. Standing, be, standing behind the pulpit is not something you're supposed to be thinking that God gave me just for granted. He put you there with a great mission. And that great mission has consequences behind it. And if you play with it, the consequences will be there for you. Preach the word of God. Exhort the message of the cross. Teach the people of God. The truth and the truth will set them free. So, the church, I said, has to have guidance. And the church we want this time when we come out and back again into the churches, we want the church to have a good guidance, a good leadership. And also, the person who is directing there, he should know that I'm really being called by God. This way, God called me to do it. You have to have conviction that God called you. The Bible is telling us, all of us, we have to rebuild the walls of God, the church of God. You may say, I'm not a pastor. God didn't give me the great commission of God. Or to, God. to God didn't give me the great commission. But God gave you the great commission. Because every person has the great commission from God. For the church to be built, it needs people. For the church to be built, it needs financial. The church to be built, it needs workers and people who are supposed to be doing that work. 
So you may be one of them. This is the moment we have to sit down and think, what is the mission God gave me? The great commission God gave me is that for me to rebuild the war. And to rebuild the war is to rebuild the church of God. Rebuilding the church of God, how? By a good doctrine, by a good leadership, by a good guidance, and by someone who knows that God has called me. Who has conviction in him that God has called me. And he has to preach the word of God without fear, without favor, but with conviction in him. And you who are there as the churchgoers, as the children of God, who are called by his name, you have to know your great commission which God has given to you. The great commission of you is for you to be there to help to build the church of God. You may be helping to build the church of God by your finance. You may help to build the church of God by your hands. You may help to build the church of God by any means possible that God has provided in your play, in your in your in your in your possession. It's not everybody who stand on the pulpit and preach. It's not everybody who stand on the pulpit and sing. It's not everybody who do those things. There is other works in the church that you may supposed to be doing, and that's the great commission God has given to you. Church of God. What doctrine do you have in the church? What leadership do you have in the church? What guidance do you have in the church? Do you have anybody who has conviction in that church that he can preach the word of God without fear, without favor? Do you have in that church that someone has the ability to say that God called me in this mission? Do you have good guidance in that church? Do you have good leadership in that church? Those are the questions you're supposed to ask yourself in you. And see, Exactly what God has for you. The great commission God has given to us is for us to rebuild the war. To rebuild the war. The war we are rebuilding is the good doctrine. This is the time God has put you down to sit down in your house and think how am I going to rebuild the war which I misled a lot of people, which has misled the children of God? I've teach them the false doctrine. What I was preaching is only blessings, 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 miracles, miracles. We don't refuse miracles. We don't refuse blessings. But first of all, people has to accept Christ, person and savior of their lives. People has to acknowledge that Jesus Christ died for them at a cross. People has to acknowledge that there is somebody who... He is and who was at the cross because of them. People have to start fearing God. We have to preach the message of the cross. And when we preach the message of the cross, the message of the cross is the key to everything which people are looking for in life. If you want miracles, miracles will follow after the message of the cross. Miracles is in there. They said the work of the cross is the source of all things. The work of the cross, the message of the cross is the source of all things. So if you want miracles, you pastor, you have to preach the message of the cross. Churches has to be preaching the message of the cross. If they want blessings, children of God in the church, you have to start preaching the message of the cross. You have to start preaching the word of God. Don't start preaching only the, the blessings. Don't stack on one thing. Don't choose the word to preach. Don't compromise the word of God. And you children of God, you got to look in the church you are going. And God will give you the discernment to understand exactly why am I here in this church. Is this church have a good wall? around it or it is a broken war i've already told you the war i'm talking about is a good doctrine which stands and be grounded and be founded on the word of god on the message of the cross and it has to have a good leadership it has to have a good guidance it has to have someone in there who knows that 
God has called me. Who has real in his heart saying that, yes, God called me in this mission and I'll do it. And that person has to preach the word of God without favor, without fear, and with conviction. And without compromising the word of God. So God be the glory. I have a lot to say, but the time is finishing. And uh, the technology was completely very difficult today. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Pastor Eli. Hello, Thomas. Bonjour, bonjour. Bonjour. Comment ça va? Uh, ça va très bien. Merci beaucoup. I'm very, I'm very well. Glory Your God is, uh, is very good. Ah, glory be to God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to add on there or you just called so that... Uh, you should greet us and may the Lord bless you. Kama uliita tu kwa ajili ya kusema utusalimu au kuna kitu ambacho nitafuta kuongeza kidogo kwa second. Ndio nili nilipenda kusema jambo moja tu. Sijui kama mtanipa ruhusa. Okay, uko na 1 minute. Okay. Mhm. Mm Nilipenda kuzungumza na dunia yote mzima ama je voulais parler avec le monde. Aujourd'hui le monde est en train de traverser une crise que le monde ne sait jamais maîtriser. Nous savons que celui qui a la puissance de maîtriser cette situation, ce n'est que Dieu. Et ce Dieu là, il n'a pas agi depuis plus, euh, plus longtemps avant qu'il ne soit peut-être la croix avant que Jésus-Christ passe à l'hôtel de la croix. Amen. Mais Dieu a eu pleinement le pouvoir quand Jésus-Christ est passé à la croix pour nous donner la liberté et pour nous amener à la délivrance de notre vie totale. C'est pour cela en ce moment, je suis en train de dire au monde, nous avons un message que Dieu nous a envoyé, c'est le message de la croix. Oh, yes. Quand ce message le monde ne peut jamais vivre. Mm. Le monde ne peut jamais avoir la paix. Mm. Parce que le Dieu que nous sommes en train de proclamer dans le message de la croix, il s'appelle Jéhovah Shalom. C'est-à-dire les dieux de paix. Amen. Comme aujourd'hui le monde est en train de chercher, la, de chercher la paix, il faut se réfugier dans le message de la croix pour que nous ayons cette paix. C'est pour cela, mon frère, ma soeur, toi, tu n'as pas encore cru au Seigneur Jésus-Christ. Il est encore grand temps pour que tu te répandes et pour que tu crois Amen. à ce message. Amen. Il est encore temps pour que tu donnes ta vie à Jésus-Christ. Il est encore temps pour que tu crois à Jésus-Christ. Regarde comme ça, comment est-ce que le monde est en train de bouger. Amen. Regarde comment est-ce que le monde est en train de pleurer. C'est lui qui a la solution. C'est Dieu. C'est lui qui doit donner la solution. C'est Dieu. Amen. Parce que la Bible me dit ceci. Quand Dieu parle, le monde doit se taire. Amen. Alors nous tous, nous devons nous mettre à genoux sous la croix de Jésus-Christ pour que nous prions ce Dieu qui nous a envoyé ce message pour que le monde ait la paix. Amen. Merci beaucoup. Que Dieu vous bénisse. Soyez bénis par ce message. Et nous allons encore nous retrouver le, à 19h. Que Dieu, de mon Père spirituel, l'apôtre Jordan Leani, vous bénisse et soyez bénis. Je vous appelle à partir de la République démocratique du Congo. Je suis le superintendant de CBC GLM. Que Dieu vous bénisse. Amen. Amen. Alléluia. Thank you very much, Pastor Eli. God bless you. So, I was saying this. The church you are going, you got to look at it. If it has a wall, a good wall built around it, because that's the great commission of God unto us to rebuild the wall. 
rebuilding the war, it needs to have a good doctrine. It needs to have the good leadership and the good guidance. And uh, that person has to be sure that he has been called by God. And uh, second thing, that person who is sure that has been called by God, he has to preach the word of God without fear, without favor, and have conviction in him. That's what we talked about, building the wall around the church. Children of God have to be preach the word of God, which will lead them into the right direction. Tell them when they are wrong, to guide them so that they should not go to hell. Tell them when they are right, that they should up, up keep their work in God's work, in God's church. So, these are the things we have to look in the church we are going. Most of the time, we go to church because of certain feelings. We don't need to be going to church because of certain feelings. We need to go to church because we have seen that there is God in there. They preach the word of God in there. They don't compromise the word of God. They preach the word of God without fear. They preach the word of God without favor. They preach the word of God without fear that if I preach this, a lot of people will run away from the church. I don't care if you run away from the church. As long as you have repented, you have seen that I've preached the word of God and it has touched you and you have changed for you to go to heaven at the end. Not to compromise the word of God and then later on, you go to hell. I've got a lot to talk. But we have talked today about rebuilding the wall. Second thing we're going to talk about, if God gave us time, is to rebuild the church. Is to rebu rebuild the house of God. Rebuild the house of God. So today we have talked about rebuild the walls in the church. God gave us time next week, if God, by his grace, we will talk about to rebuild the house of God. Because our time is over, and we have, got, we have passed already with one minute, which we do keep our time. We don't need to be beyond the time. We don't want to be always goes beyond our times. It's not good. We need to be always punctuating the things we do. So, today we have spoken about rebuilding the walls. Next week, by God's grace, we will talk about the rebuilding the house of God. Don't miss. Be there. And God will bless you. Because we are here to preach the message of the cross. We are going to rebuild the walls when this quarantine time is over. We are going to rebuild the house of God when this quarantine is over. Because God has given us this time. To go into ourselves and see if we are doing the real work of God in truth and in spirit. May God bless you and have a lovely, lovely Sunday service. Those who are going to the Sunday service, those who have good time, go. Don't miss. And those who are on their way to some other places, may God guide you, may God protect you, may God be with you. And uh, I will... Mention my wife, my beautiful wife, Lily Gazelle, Vi, the one I love most, the beautiful wife, most beautiful wife in the whole world. May God bless you and be with you. And I'll always pray for you because you are the mother of many. So, my beloved brothers and sisters, I've told you that God has put you back into your seat, in your house, removing you from work with a purpose. And the purpose is that you have to repent and you have to look the church you are going. If they preach the true doctrine of God, if they preach the word of God without fear, without favor, without compromising it and with conviction. And in that church, 
You should have a good leadership and a good guidance. And the person who is in front of you has to be sure that he has been called by God. Repent and God will give you discernment to know this. You may say I point at you. I'm pointing at you because I know this finger has changed a lot of people. A lot of people have come out of the place where they were in the streets. They were alcoholic people. They stopped drinking because of this finger. So I will still point at you because it's anointed finger of God. Change and God. We will bless you. We will open the doors in your life. We will give you everything you are looking for. May God bless you and have a lovely evening.